good morning. I did. And welcome to worship here at Minnehaha United Methodist Church. We are delighted that you are here, whether you've joined us in person or online. And we are particularly delighted if you are a guest with us this morning. We invite you to stay with us after the worship service. You will find refreshments in the narthex, which is just the room right on the other side of this wall. Um, if you've joined us online, refreshments are on your own. But if you're here in person, refreshments are right over there. We also have faith formation for all ages, beginning at 1045. And all of those rooms are in the education section of the building on the second and third floors. So we hope you will join us for all of that. Um, we would like to know that you are here, whether it's in person or online. And so if you're here in person, you should find these at the edges of your pews. Please go ahead and fill those out to pass them down your pew and back again. And if you have joined us online or you just prefer to do these things electronically, you can use the QR code that is on your bulletin as well as on the screen to let us know that you are here. All right, there is a lot going on. I see announcement. You need a microphone. Nope, you need a microphone. All right, you tell me. These are someone's keys. All right, so someone uh, drop their keys. If these look like yours, and there's a jeweled owl. Oh, they're right there. Hand them to Carol. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. There are more announcements. Sue, you're going to tell us something. Come yeah. stand here in the middle where I'm blocking with my scooter. Is this on? Can you guys hear yep. me? Okay, yes. good. Um, hello, Beth. Um, I'm reminding everyone, I'm here to remind everyone of the auction after service. It's going to start... After Sunday school. After, yeah, under, after Sunday school. I was going to get there. <laughs> um, the, the youth are going to be serving lunch at about 11.30. And at some point in time, when things have settled down a little bit after um, it, people have settled in for lunch, we'll start the auction probably right around quarter to 12, 12 o'clock. Brad Patterson is going to be our... Okay, 12 o'clock. He is our auctioneer. <laughs> For how many years now? 45 years, and he does a bang-up job. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. It's always a really good time. With that, I'm going to have Beth just do a little bit of testimonial, and then she's going to hand the microphone back to me. It's always good entertainment, whether you decide to buy something or not, or come home with something because you were trying to make someone else pay more. But right. <laughs> It's very fun. bidding up other people is it's, half of the entertainment. It's very right. fun. And Come just to do that. Right. And the gym is open um, for kids if they, you know. So it's just a good time. You don't have to stay to the end if you get tired, but you'll be glad you came today. 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 Um, you were given a list of items that are going to be at, up at auction today, and they run a gamut of a wide variety of items. They include low-priced items as well as higher-priced items. So you don't worry about um, how much you might need to donate to the church to participate because there's got to be something for you in the price range. Um, I want to highlight a couple things. One is that we have more kids donating this year than we ever have before. So I want to thank the youth. And when I say youth, I'm talking about young, young people under the age of 13 and below. So I think they deserve a lot of kudos for their participation. I also challenge you if the youth under the age of 13 have figured out what their skills and talents are, I think that the adults should be able to figure <laughs> out what their skills and talents are. So already I'm going to be challenging you to think about what you might donate for next year. That being said, I want to highlight one of the donations. Dr. Rachel Alger has donated a pair of hearing aids. And the details of the hearing aids are outlined in the handout, and more information will be presented at the auction. But I want you to know that this is a pretty incredible donation. And so if you have hearing loss, or if you're like me, on the verge of hearing loss, I want you to consider uh, bidding on the hearing aids. 
right, excellent. And this okay. is, I should say, this is the major fundraiser for our church. So come and have a lovely time, but also know that this is one of our big fundraisers. Yep. So I look forward to seeing you. All right. I wanted to mention very quickly that um, it's Dylan's birthday today. She turned eight, and she is celebrating by bringing cupcakes for our coffee hour. So Yay! tell her. <laughs> we should we should maybe sing. Oh, yeah. you want to start it? I don't want to start it, but look, there are choir members right there. So, and there's a band behind us. I think we okay. should sing happy birthday to Dylan. All right. Happy One more thing I want to make you aware of, maybe get it on your calendars, but at least start thinking about it, is the church is doing um, camping, a group camping thing that's really kind of sponsored by the Ketchums. But I want to let you know, August 16th through 18th, if you have any interest, it's going to be camping with the church. All right. Group camping. It's going to be fun. Bring your whatever you need to camp in. All right. Hi, I'm Kristen Southworth. I am here to tell, tell you about our Taize service, which is this Friday at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Um, if you don't know what our Taize service is here at Minnehaha, it is a monthly meditative contemplative service. It's candle lit. Um, there's time for silent prayer, reflection. Um, there's music. This month in honor of Earth Day, which is April 22nd, um, all of the donations from this Friday's service will be going to Minnehaha's Climate Action Committee's Joan Ellison Fund um, to help with all of the um, climate services um, and action that Minnehaha does. So it's this Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, hope to see you there. Thank all you. Right. Thanks, Kristen. I'm going to hand that right back to Jean. All right, and just a reminder, you would have gotten a special e-news this week uh, with the worship survey in it. Please do take that worship survey. We do want to know your responses. And there will be a reminder link in the e-news this week. So there won't be a whole special separate email, but we will have a link in the e-news. If you did not get any of these things and you want to, please let us know. We can add you to the list. And if you need a hard copy of the worship survey instead, again, please let me know. We'll make sure to get one to you. We're going to not do this forever, so like two weeks. So please fill that out this week so that we can get those responses back. Thank you. It'll help us make decisions around worship. So, yep, yep, let us know what we're all thinking about it because we made some changes this year. So, yep. Right. Yep. Pardon? Check your spam folder, right, if you didn't, if you normally get the e-news and you didn't see it, check your spam folder, exactly. All right, you got anything? No, we're good. All right, so read the rest of the announcements yourselves and please rise in body or spirit for our call to worship. Christ has risen, praise God. We bring our joyful hallelujahs to this place today. The tomb is empty and new life hovers in the dawn. We praise God for the mystery and the excitement of new life present in this day. And our opening song is Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
seated. I invite the children to come and join me for this morning's children's message. Good morning, good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Thumbs up? Meh. Thumbs down, anyone? We got some thumbs up happening. Awesome. And who got to spend s at least some time outdoors yesterday when summer came to visit us? It's a whole day? Yay. So this morning, friends, we're going to be talking about a bunch of things. But one of them is about the theme of God, community, and food. One of our favorite topics, right? So the Bible teaches us that whenever people get together and gather, God's spirit is there too. And there's some cool power in us gathering together. And when we gather together, what's something else that usually is involved? Food. Yes. So question, does your family have any kind of food traditions when you all gather for special occasions? So for example, when it comes around each year for your birthday, does your family have a tradition of the birthday person gets to choose what's for dinner or maybe what kind of cake you get? Anybody have those? Yeah, what are some of the, tra what are some of the food traditions on your birthday? Is it the cake? Or you get to choose, like, which restaurant? For that month, you get sugar cereal of your choice? <gasps> Ooh, we got some ideas percolating. Yeah, how about you? Ice cream Sundays was your treat? Yeah. Yeah, you get to bring cool stuff to share at school, like cake or cupcakes. Okay, one more, Helen. You get to do both, cake choice and restaurant choice. All right, some parents might be listening here for some ideas. All right, so let's think about the, um, some special meals at your house. Does anyone have a certain dinner menu for Thanksgiving each year? Yeah. Um, how about Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, a special dinner? Sometimes. Um, what about, ooh, we had this one recently, Easter morning. Any traditions for Easter? Yep. And candy. Lots of candy. Yes. Um, Waylon, do you have traditions on Easter? Chocolate bunny ears and the dyed eggs. Scrumptious. All right, one more question. When you guys have friends come over to your place, do y'all have snacks or something that you make sure to have to share sometimes? Do you have any? Okay, yeah. Okay, so you know when you have a friend coming over to make sure there's something, something to share. That's awesome. How about when we eat here at the church together, like Wednesday night dinners, or like this lunch, we're gonna have lunch together. Any favorite menu item that you guys have had here? Or what do we always have chill, uh, Christmas pageant dinner? What do we have for that meal? Do you guys remember? <laughs> oh, Julia remembers, it's Sloppy Joe's. Yeah. So food's important to us when we gather in community, whether it's our family or when relatives come to visit or our friends come over or we gather here with our church family, food's really important and that's the power that we have with community and sharing. And whenever that happens, we are reminded that God is always with us as well. And since we're talking about food, you know I gotta hand out some food to share with all of us kiddos. And another key component here at Minnehaha is whenever we do share the table or a meal together, we try to have food that everyone can enjoy. Whether you have a food allergy, like some of us can't eat dairy or meat or nuts, things like that. So we have 
friends that make food that's safe for everybody to eat. So we've got cheese crackers that are vegan so that all of us can share together and no one's left out. We try to make that happen, right? So before the chaos, friends, everyone can have crackers. And then while we're doing that, everyone is invited to turn to their neighbor and share the peace of Christ. All right, Maddie, let's go back to our seats. All right, I invite you to find your way back to your seats. I don't like to turn on the mask. Turn on, turn on. All right, so as you find your way back to your seats, and I encourage you to continue those conversations at coffee hour, and we prepare for our time of prayer together, I invite you to take a look at the front of the second page of the bulletin for the folks there that we are holding in our prayers. So just a, a reminder that we are holding Jody Bouchot in our prayers that you, you may remember Jody. Jody has MS and she has it very severely so she can only get around in a power wheelchair and at this point has to be wheeled by somebody else. But she can't even do that right now because she has sores that make it so that she cannot be sitting in her wheelchair. So her contact is pretty limited. And so prayers for healing of those sores so that she can be more active in the life and the house that she is living in. You can send a mail to her. Yep, 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 absolutely. Um, also, the funeral service for Bernie Pekarski will be this coming Saturday. It'll be downstairs in the fellowship hall beginning at 9 o'clock. So any who want to come to that. All right. If you have joys or concerns, things that you would like us to be holding in prayer, I'm going to send Jean out with the microphone. Uh, just raise your hand and let us know, and Jean will come find you. Derek and I, ooh, is it on? Yeah, yep. okay. Derek and I got engaged last weekend, so. <laughs> we got a dog named Oliver this weekend. Woo! So I got transportation issues, so it's really great I can be here. But um, I um, do counseling, uh, or I'm being counseled, and I always write a list and think of Minnehaha Church because I write, what are my joys and what are my concerns? Excellent. Glad to hear that. Phyllis Garmer here. I was in Oxendales on Friday, and a lady came up to me with a big smile on her face, and she said, God loves you. Aww. And I said thank you and told her that God loves her also. That's awesome. Are there others? All right, well, we also hold in our prayers people the world over, and so, Having just sung, make me a channel of your peace. I think today is a good day for us to be praying for peace. Um, not just the things that are in the news around the Middle East, but also things that fall often to the bottom of the news cycle. So we know that there is conflict in countries all over the world, that there are neighborhoods and homes that are not 
peaceful. And so we pray for peace, not just internationally, but also quite locally. And so holding these and many other things in our hearts, I invite us to join our voices together in our morning prayer. We come before you, O God, in Easter joy, seeking to be a people of the resurrection. Be known among us. Grant us the assurance of your presence, your love, and your renewing power. Through your word and spirit, reveal to us your purpose in our lives. Amen. Let us be in a time of silent prayer. O oh God, we bring to you all of our joys, the joys of spring coming in all around us, of flowers on the burst of blooming, grass that is turning green, leaves that are starting to bud on the trees, and all the other joys in our lives. And at the same time, O oh God, we know that there are things that weigh our hearts down, places where there is not new life, places instead where there is grief, where there is the need for healing. We pray, O oh God, for an end to violence everywhere. We pray for neighbors and family and ourselves and for people across the world, even people across the street. O oh God, hear all of our prayers as we gather them together in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, our Creator, God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet, for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. 
May God add blessing and understanding to this reading. Amen. Halfway there. <laughs> so you may remember on Easter, the passage from Mark leaves us wondering what happened after the empty tomb. It just stops there. Luke, though, Luke wants us to know a few more things after the empty tomb. In Luke's story, the women see the empty tomb and then they go to tell the men. The men consider it an idle tale since it comes from women, but they do go take a look. They notice that the tomb is empty. They don't quite know what to do with that. And then randomly, two of them decide to go to Emmaus later that day. It's a full day's walk. So they walk to Emmaus and along the way, they're joined by a stranger who talks to them, and then they come to Emmaus, and they stop, and they invite the stranger to have dinner with them, and then that stranger takes bread and breaks it, and suddenly in that moment, they realize that this was Jesus the entire time, and then Jesus, poof, disappears, um, and they run seven miles, the Bible says, run all the way back and tell the rest of the disciples what had happened. And then there is the passage for today. They, some number of Jesus' followers, we don't know how many, are gathered together. And then Jesus just appears among them. They are terrified, as they should be. If we were all sitting here and Jesus just, poof, appeared amongst us, we would also be terrified. So I don't blame them at all. They should absolutely be terrified. So they are. They're terrified. And Jesus says, peace be with you. And I don't think that makes them less terrified. Any more than when the angel appears to Mary and says, do not be afraid. Always the first sign that you should be afraid is when an angel says, do not be afraid, because nothing good is going to come out of this. So Jesus appears amongst them, and they just assume he's a ghost. Note, not a zombie a ghost. So Jesus comes and they say, you must be a ghost. And Jesus says, no, 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 because see my hands. And he shows them his hands and his feet because that's where the nail holes are. And so look, it's me. See, physically, like, look at my hands. Touch me. See? And the disciples are like, oh, no, I am not falling for that. Nope, nope, still a ghost. And she's like, fine. Do you have something to eat? Um... Yes, and they give him a piece of broiled fish, and he eats it, and then they say, okay, he just ate that. Apparently ghosts don't eat fish. I didn't know this, but they knew that. And so they're calmed down just enough that Jesus is able to tell them what he came there to tell them. Isn't it interesting that in Luke, both of the stories of Jesus' appearance after his death involve food? I mean, I'm not terribly surprised. Most of church revolves around food, does it not? Right, we just heard an entire set of stories about how actually our whole lives revolve around food. There is communion, of course, but there are also potlucks, there are Wednesday night dinners, there's coffee hour, and there are food ministries that also revolve around food. We see that people are hungry and we do what we can to get food to them because we know that it's hard to learn when you're hungry. It's hard to go on a job hunt when you're hungry. It's hard to stand in long lines every day to see about getting housing when you are hungry. It's hard to care for your children when you are hungry. It's hard for your children when they are hungry. I know I'm not at my best when I'm hungry. I don't know that any of us are. And so a lot of our society revolves around food. 
and people. Because we see our neighbors at the grocery store, or random people who tell us that God loves us. How awesome is that? Just at the grocery store, these things happen. We meet friends at restaurants. We have people over for lunch or for dinner. You probably, if you have kids, have a pile of snacks in your house that you feed to all the kids when they gather at your house to play. I had a friend who just told me that that's the first, son, the first question his child asks when arriving at someone's house. What snacks do you have? <laughs> it's an important question, and I don't, I don't think that should be discouraged necessarily, but at any rate, the question for us is where is Jesus in the midst of that? Because we know where the food is, we know how we're gathering around the food, but where is Jesus in it? Why do we do this? I mean, other than the fact that we need to eat. Why do we gather around food? Why do we have coffee hour? Because really, I mean, you don't absolutely need it, right? I mean, some of you are going to disagree with me. I see small hands going, excuse me? <laughs> we gather around food because in the midst of the food, we find community because we are gathered. And we find connections. And we find God in the midst of that. This story from Luke, though, begs a question bigger than food. Hard to believe that there are questions bigger than food, but it does beg that question. So did the disciples actually see Jesus after his death? Like, really, see Jesus, not not metaphorically see Jesus, but did they actually see Jesus? Because this passage spends a lot of time trying to make sure that we understand that they actually saw Jesus. Like physically, hands, feet, ate fish. Jesus was in their midst. I always offer the option at Easter that resurrection can be metaphorical as well as literal. That we don't physically have to see Jesus to experience the resurrection ourselves. But Luke asks us to look a little deeper at that. In fact, Matthew and John do as well. They invite me and maybe all of us to think about the importance of what it would mean for Jesus to have appeared to the disciples and always when Jesus appears, it's in an earthy sort of way. Like, here are my hands, here are my feet, do you have some food? It's like that. Jesus appears in the midst of fishing. Jesus appears and offers breakfast. Jesus appears and says, touch me and see. It's a, it's a physical body. Which actually is a little disappointing. Because I always hoped that if there were a bodily resurrection, that we would get to be changed right? I, I was hoping they would be different than this, but Jesus is like, no, look, the hand, holes in my hands and my feet. And I was thinking, oh, shoot. I was kind of hoping that maybe that would not be the case. Maybe the holes would have all healed up, and there's Jesus, all good, and each of us can be our best selves. But apparently when Jesus appears, he still has the same body. So here's the thing. We know about God in bodies. There's something about the physicality, the touching, the eating, the talking to one another. The senses that we have are how we experience God. So maybe, maybe Jesus really did appear in his body to those followers right after the resurrection to assure them that they were still going to experience God in their bodies. I wonder if maybe I'm missing out on something by only staying in the metaphorical world. I don't know. I also wonder if this had something to do, you know, there were really early controversies in Christianity about whether Jesus was actually ever a physical being. We teach now, so the, the theology that won out, is that Jesus was both and. So Jesus was human and divine at the same time. Fully human, 
fully divine. But right around the time that theology was being formed, there were a whole lot of people who were like, ooh, no, not fully human. Like, not birth canal human. Mm, no. Nuh-uh. So after Jesus was born, yes, then that's fine. And then those same theologies said that at the moment that Jesus is put up on the cross, God leaves. That the divine leaves Jesus. It's just human because there's no way God would go through a birth canal or experience death. Those aren't the theologies that went out. The theology we have is, yep, human and divine all the way through. In fact, that's kind of the point, is that God understands, having created us, God understands entirely what it means to be human. And so if God is going to send God's own self, it would make sense that God indeed experiences all of humanity. Why would you not be present for all of it? And so when Jesus appears again, it's part of that earthy reminder that God is right there, even sitting in a body that's got holes in it. That God eats fish like everybody in that day did. But here's the thing. It wasn't permanent. The very next set of verses, Jesus ascends into heaven. Because Jesus is not sitting around here right now, at least I didn't think so. I mean, Jesus is not wandering around in a white robe with his sandals and wavy brown hair. Actually, is that what he looked like? We're not even entirely sure. At any rate, we don't have a Jesus wandering around in our midst with holes in his hands and in his feet eating fish. Jesus is, instead, a concept for us. So maybe it's both. Maybe Jesus' resurrection is both literal and metaphorical. Because it turns out resurrection is not the same thing as immortality. We still need to figure out how to be followers of Jesus without a physical Jesus right here. For 2,000 years, we've had to figure that out. It was only a very small generation of people that actually had Jesus in their midst. But look at us. Look at us figuring it out. Look at us and the generations before us and the generations who will come after us. We're just doing the best we can in our very earthly, human, imperfect bodies. People who are eating what we can with one another, reminding ourselves of how it is that God is in our midst and of how it is that we are followers of Jesus, we still need to pray and read and talk and discern and wonder and try and try again. It's not too dissimilar from how the disciples did it. But there it is, Jesus in our midst and not in our midst, and, and here we are. So I don't know what it was like for those followers of Jesus to encounter him after his death. What I do know is that we don't have a human Jesus with us today. And I also know we have to eat. So I encourage us to feed our human bodies, knowing that what feeds our bodies can feed our souls. And I encourage us to look for the spirit of Jesus in ourselves and in others, to see it at the grocery store, at the kitchen table, in communion, over a cup of coffee, in the race for cookies after worship, or today, cupcakes after worship. You are going to want to be fast, by the way, to get there. We need to look for the spirit of Jesus at the food shelf, and everywhere that we go, may we glimpse the resurrection every day. And may we continue to be witnesses to its power. Amen. And so we continue our worship by taking our morning offering.
So if you are here in person, there will be ushers, and if you are online, there are online opportunities. Actually, if you're here in person, there are also electronic opportunities. You can use that QR code that's in your bulletin as well as on your screen. We invite you to support the mission and ministry of Minnehaha, and we encourage you to live your lives in ways that are generous at all times. Amen. with me in the prayer of dedication. We give thanks, gracious God, for the joy of giving our gifts and ourselves. May others find refreshment and wholeness through our sharing. Amen. So I just want to remind you that we pay licensing fees for almost all the music that we use in worship, except for spirituals, which are in the public domain because, of course, their authorship has been lost over time due to historic racism and enslavement. So we have a spirituals fund. If you wish to contribute to our spirituals fund, please feel free to do that. And then we donate that once a year to arts programs in the area that are encouraging uh, children and people of color to work in the arts. All right. Having said that, let's sing our sending song. Oh, happy day. Please rise in body or spirit.
like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the roof, God is over our heads. Like the horizon, God is beyond us. Like water in a pitcher, God is within us and pouring out of us. And like a pebble in the sea, we are within God. So let us go forth and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen.
such a it's such a tone shift from D 